Hello everyone, so in this video, it's a very special video because I will be showing you something that is very exciting for everyone. So if you ever wonder how to do a reverse shell and copy files from a USB directly once you plug it, so this is your video, I'll be showing you everything from scratch. I already put a lot of time and effort to make it happen, alright, so I had to do some research and to be able to put it together a lot of tests and errors so to make a 20 minute video very easy for you guys to watch so let's get started so what you guys see in front of you it's a github repository that is empty okay we have the readme that i did basically and we'll be implementing everything along the way so i'm not gonna code really anything but i'll be showing you the codes that have been made and that i will be putting then we're gonna push this to github it's gonna be public you will be able to see it you will be able to use it on usb and you can tweak it as much as you want okay so let's get started so before i start i just want to make sure that this script is provided for testing and educational purposes only it's not intended to hack anyone or to do something bad so i just want to show you how great sometimes we can perform things that could result to something right so let's get started so the first thing we'll be doing is to create the auto run and that auto run so we create a file that is called auto run dot enf and i'm not gonna lie to you guys it's not gonna work all the time the auto run because windows now have security okay so most of the time it's gonna run sometimes it's not gonna run so we're just gonna make it easier for you you put everything on a usb you plug it and you just click on one bad file that it will trigger everything else okay so let's take this code i don't need the icon if you want you can download an icon ico any type of icon and you can add it but in this video i don't need it and the open it's gonna be start that bat right so because we want to do a not to run for that file but if you have a new version of window it's not gonna work unless the defender is down and you have to tweak the uh, registry and stuff so afterwards so now we need to create the start file which will contain all the logic that will trigger everything else so that start file here and i will be pulling the code now just gonna copy it here so I will give you a brief on this so first you have the color which is green and make it nicer on the terminal it looks like the matrix you have it's gonna echo which operation system so basically what I did I did something that is a bit nicer so basically it check your operation system if it, you're on Windows it's gonna trigger the function uh, which is the Windows one if you're on Linux, it's gonna trigger the Linux version because don't forget the Windows it's .bat and also Linux it's uh, .sh. So uh, in this video, I'll be showing you the Windows version, but you have the Linux version already available. So if in the future you want the Linux version as a video, please let me know. I'll be showing you, but you see all the time I see videos, it's always about Linux, Linux, Linux but in reality most of the people they use windows so i want to do something that can relate to every day right so here uh, it's gonna call the windows function and the windows function it will start a file that is called copy to usb windows and it's gonna also run another file that is called nmap installer windows so the good thing about 
what I'm doing is basically I'm doing everything from A to Z. Basically, I install the Nmap on the computer. I download the Nmap on the computer. Then I install it. And then I run the reverse shell. Okay, so it's doing all the steps from scratch. So let's go ahead and copy to USB Windows. So a new file. So copy to USB Windows dot bat. Okay. So now that we have this file, I just want to go and uh, do the Linux version so I don't forget it because that file will go into the GitHub repository. So now we have the copy to USB Linux and let's open this one and copy the code and paste it. So we have this one done. So let's go into the Windows one and let's go to Windows and I will do a bit of explanation here. So also what I did is at the same time, once you launch the start, it's going to take all the files that are in the system and copy them where into your USB. Okay. Which I created the directory called backup and it's an empty directory and everything will go to that directory. So the destination directory is backup. So you can call it whatever you want and change it. But this is what I call it. Also, what I'm doing is this is all the type of extensions that I want to copy into my USB. So we have the PDF, we have the doc and the XLS and the images. And what I'm saying here is I want to exclude the program files and the program files x86 and the WAMP. Okay, WAMP because we're programmers, so we have the WAMP. So those files, I think they're not necessary for me. What I want is really the documents, the images, the docs file, everything uh, from the victim. It's those files. And afterwards, what I'm doing here, it's uh, I make it a bit nicer. So you can see a bit of UI in the terminal. And when this is done, so now we have copy to USB Windows. If you remember, we do the Nmap installer to Windows. So let's go ahead and create that one. So the Nmap.bat. So for this file, this start to get more interesting. So here what I'm doing, I'm setting the download URL of Nmap for Windows version and the installer name. Okay, and where do I want to put the Nmap? So it's in C and map. So what we want to do now, because I already performed this test multiple occasions to be able to make it work. So I'm going to just delete this file because I already performed that in order to show you the real example. Okay. And something else to tweak it in the future. Okay. So the download could take a while before it's finished, depend on your internet speed. So what you can do, it's really download that one and put it into the USB and then install it from the USB, right? So you don't, you don't need to download it from the internet. So what it does after it's install uh, downloading, it's going to install that application. And then when it's installed, it's going to trigger the check and launch Windows and map. So let's go ahead and create this one dot bat so what it does here let me pull this out so what it does here okay it's gonna check if you have nmap available if not so first here it's gonna check if you have nmap so if you have the nmap just gonna call the reverse shell okay so there's two difference there's you have the call okay for uh where is it this one or this one or you have the start okay the start it trigger a new window but the call it's gonna stay in the same terminal right it's just gonna jump to another file inside that terminal 
So what it does here, if you have the nmap installed, it's just going to proceed to the reverse shell. Okay. So I'm just going to take that one because we did not do it yet. So this is nice view. So basically we need to create now the reverse shell windows.bat. So I'm just going to take this one. Okay. So this here is what happened when we do the reverse shell. So I'm just going to copy it and paste it here. So let's go back here. I'm just going to explain a bit uh, what it does. So basically uh, what I did here, if you don't have Nmap installed, I give you options to download the Nmap from your browser. So when you click on the option two, it's going to take you to the browser and you can just download it. And then you can click back to one and then continue the process to the end map or you can exit. So it's a nice way of doing things because sometimes, you know, the code is not always reliable. So basically, if you're on option one, it's going to set the uh, reverse shell window. It's going to call it in the same window. OK, else if you choose uh, option two, it's going to start take you to the nmap uh, download HTML and the third option is just going to exit. OK, so this is done. So now we were checking that I want to make sure that nmap is installed and so I can proceed right to the reverse shell. So like this is very basic. It's a version 1.0. We can tweak it in the future, make it better. So make it more bulletproof. But for the time being, this is what I have. And then this is the reverse shell windows. So basically is just going to check if this exists directory. OK, why this directory? Because it's where the, uh, the file setup we had. So that means it got downloaded. OK, and it's there. And wh what I did is I add to prompt the IP address and the port because I want to make it more dynamic. OK, I don't want to put like an IP and the port that is static and you can change your server on a daily basis or a weekly basis due to security reasons or else. So in this way, you just put the IP of your new uh, new server and the port and bam, it should just trigger the reverse shell. So this is for the Windows version, but we don't have to forget the Linux version because like I said, this has to go into the repository and I want you guys to have a look at it. So here, let's create reverse shell Linux dot sh. So let's not forget that. So I'm doing the same thing here. So, but basically in, uh, in Linux, you use NC. Uh, and so let's go back and check all the files. So we have the backup, we have the auto run, we have the check and launch windows and map, copy to linux.sh, copy to windows and map installer. We have the reverse shell.sh and the reverse shell windows.bat and we have the start. So we have everything set to be able to jump into the action. So now I want to show you something. It's my server. Basically, I have a dummy server in Linode. You can use whatever you want hosting, but just to show you guys. So I have this server that is dummy. I already opened a terminal and the first thing you want to do as an attacker, if you want to listen to a specific port, right? Just waiting to for the victim to connect or your friend is plugging the USB and you're waiting until he connect on the reverse shell. So now what we'll do is we need to do the NC dash NL VP and the port. I just choose by like this 4444 it was easy. So now what's happening is now we are listening to anything that is coming with the port 4444, right? So I'm just going to put this as a side, okay? So I want to go to the control panel because I want to show you that I already have Nmap. I want to uninstall it. 
so to show you guys that we won't have it and then we'll proceed with the full action so uh, i took the liberty to create a readme page okay for github so make it nicer so we have the feature which is reverse shell launcher we have the nmap integration and for the usb to copy the files so basically the usage and the requirement it's any operation system linux and windows it's not existing yet for mac we can do it in the future and we have the disclaimer which is very important just to make sure so this is uninstalled now we don't have it now let's go back to where is it okay so i'm just gonna open this Wait, give me a second okay so i have a usb that i called scrapping here okay so now we're just gonna begin everything okay and start so i'm just starting now so you can see there's multiple windows opening at the same time so the first window is the start one right it's checking the operation system and then it's launching whatever you want to launch so on the right side you can see that it's really copying all the files into my usb so if i go to my usb now okay i can see two files so let me delete them so i can show you that it's working uh, maybe it's gonna fail because no it's not okay so now i'm deleting those files i should have more coming yeah it's taking a while because it's on the usb okay while this is finishing all right so now we have only aladdin it seems that because it's creating inside that folder other files so i'm just gonna leave it a bit and then to show you what's happening so at the same time now it's downloading the end map and the good thing about that script that I, that we did together here it's you see now it added another file so i'm just gonna stop this one because i don't need those file I'm just testing with you guys so i'm just exiting just gonna delete them i don't need those file just for testing so the good thing about the script that we did is the nmap installer no not nmap installer yes it is so it's always checking if it's downloaded once it's installed once the installation is complete so that's the good thing about it so then it trigger the reverse shell because you want to make sure that you have it ready before you launch that command right you don't want to launch a command that the the application doesn't exist okay so now it's gonna take a couple of seconds maybe a minute but that's why i told you maybe it's a better approach to in the future take the file the setup file that is nmap and put it directly in your usb and in here okay the nmap installer instead of invoking like the url okay to set up to install it you just take it from your usb and you just install it you don't need, you don't even need to download it so let's go back here i want to make sure to show you everything that is happening all right don't forget we're already listening to the port which is 444 i'm just gonna keep it here all right and this is my server i'm just gonna also go to github and i'll be showing you what's happening here all right so yes right here so this is the repository the time that this finish because it could take probably another minute or so so <clears throat> it's an empty repository that you guys can access please feel free to add some comments if you want to be a contributor more than happy 
we can just uh, made it, make it uh, so much better and improve it and add probably more features in the future. So this is something that uh, we, can, we can modify together. So let's see what's happening here. It's still installing. And let me close those ones. There's so many open. Yeah, it's about 20 megabyte, if I'm not mistaken, to have it done. And this is the file. All right, almost there, guys. Bear with me. You can skip. You can skip until you see that this is completed. But for me, I'm just gonna stay <laughs> until I can show you the whole feature. So you can just excited to start and working with it. I think it's almost done so it's a good time to tell you if you want to subscribe you should subscribe to my channel so the more you guys um, give me a thumbs up the more uh, I'll be able to make more videos and be more focused on this I'm pretty new on YouTube but uh, I really like it so I want to help people or make it easier for people to understand things like sometimes i see videos that are crazy that everything is perfect but when you try to do it it's it's not working properly so now <coughs> now it's installing the file downloaded installing the nmap so now we're gonna get prompt to install nmap which is great, this is what we want, this is the expected behavior that we want in the system. Yes, agree, and I agree. Great, so now it finish, next, no, no, next finish. So now this is completed, it's gonna trigger the reverse shell launcher. So now we need to add the IP address of uh, our uh, server. So it's 172.105.84.66. So 172.105, oh, sorry, dot. 105.84.66 and now the port it's because we're listening to the port 4444 and now we enter now we have access to the reverse shell so we are connected to this computer so if I do there I can see because I'm in the USB so basically I can see everything I can go if you want to uh, I can do anything so I can uh, see the backups so now I have access to the backup file uh, I can go back so this is guys it's pretty basic there's no LS so it's there so this is a very basic way to connect uh, with the reverse shell to another computer uh, I I'm gonna make some improvements on the github before even 
publish this video there's a place where uh, you remember when we checked where is it the check and launch windows it's giving me a hard time sometimes because it, it sometimes it says that nmap is not installed but it is installed so don't panic the only thing you need to do guys if this happened to you you just click on reverse shell windows bat and you will be able to do the same process that i did so i'm just going to take you through it again okay so you can run those those bat files individually so i'm just going to do it very quickly so i can show you i'm just going to pull back the uh, in my linode and just reverse shell windows i'm just going to put the 172.105.84 the port 444 so now i'm connected once again so i can do whatever i want uh, not that less there so right so and that's it this is for this video if you guys um, need anything just put your comments below and uh, don't forget to subscribe in my channel hopefully you like this video thank you